You know, right before we interviewed Chip, we were talking about this group up here. Of course, Kurt Busch in the two car still leading this thing, but Greg Biffle in that 16, he has smacked the wall. He started in 40th, and now he's up to number two spot. Well, last Saturday night, Kurt Busch smacked the wall, said he made the car better. He went all the way to victory lane with it. Maybe that's what you got to do in Charlotte. The Coca-Cola 600 on Fox is sponsored by Coca-Cola. It's time to fire up the grill, open up a Coke, and start enjoying summer. 1989 at Charlotte Motor Speedway, Darrell Waltrip, Jeff Hammond go to victory lane, and the Daytona 500 Icky Shuffle continues. Round two for DW winning. And there's Chris Economaki, the Dean of American Motorsports announcers. Hi to Chris up in New Jersey watching tonight and here's your coca-cola race summary Kurt Busch is your leader 28 cars on the lead lap we've had nine leaders the front spots changed hands 15 times and three cautions for 13 laps loved economaki wow Darryl. <laughs> hi chris second and third of change clint boyer birthday boy is up for second place and David Rudeman has moved up into third. Rudeman's been a top five car all afternoon. And Greg Biffle, Biffle has now slipped to fourth. What's happened to Biffle, Steve? Well, right now he's overheating. He's talking to crew chief Greg Irwin. Biffle said the car had gotten, the water temperature mic had gotten as high as 280 degrees. He thinks he has something on the front end, the nose of that race car. That's why he dropped back. He tried to get behind uh, a couple of other cars, but he is real str he's struggling right now. It's hot. Well, there's no question. This 16 car of Biffle, Greg Irwin, they would love to see a caution. 38, 38. I, I think I see a little white piece of something stuck up in the uh, cavity there of the, between the splitter and the bumper where the radiator air inlet is. That could be what's causing causing Biffle his problems. You see it right in there. Yep. Greg, I can't visually see anything, even with the TV help. It's just up under the very bottom. Yeah, that opening is right under that front bumper area, and it definitely looks like there's a little something there. They run as much tape as they can because that really helps the aerodynamics, the front grip of the tires, and you get a little bit of paper on there, you start running too hot. Jeff Gordon started the night out very lackluster, but for his patriotic paint job, raced around in the 20s, but now the four-time champion is up to fifth place. Every 50 laps, he's moved up five spots. He was in the 20th spot, then he was in the 15th, then he's in the 10th, and now he's in the 5th, and I got a feeling he's honing in on the lead. But, guys, I'm pretty impressed with this 98 car of Paul Menard. We saw him spin his tires on that last restart. This is the same car that he and Slugger Labby ran in the sprint showdown last week, finished fourth, worked hard this week to turn it back around. Matt Yoakum, it looks like the more this track gains grip, they're getting better and better. Continue to climb up the scoreboard. And Larry Mackey mentioned last week that Richard Petty Motorsports teams went in different directions trying to hit on something they felt like Menard's setup was the one to go with. So they all migrated toward what he was running here this weekend. Twice tonight, they've gone with two tires. The last stop, they pulled the spring rubber out of the left rear and an air pressure change to free him up. He'd love to do what that guy right in front of him, Jeff Gordon, did. Score his first ever cup win right here in the Coke 600. Menard started 31st. Right behind him, Jamie McMurray. The Daytona 500 winner started 27. And the young man from Missouri is showing him. He's uh, climbed up here to seventh spot. And we've had, you know, the last several years over here, we've had first time winners. You think back to Casey Mears, last year David Rudeman. Uh, this 600 milers sometimes falls right into your lap uh, unexpectedly. Jeff Burton is one of those fellows that you may not see at the front until late in the race. He's been a top 10 car all day for Richard Childress, and he's won the race twice before. Krista? Yes, he has three wins here, too, in the Coca-Cola 600. And, yeah, he's one of the guys who knows all about the opportunity comes later in the night. We talked at the start of the show, patience. He is so good at stretching things out and knowing when to get his car right. And it is right right now. He's been tight. Ben Lewis, he was crazy tight a few uh, runs ago. Right now, loose entry and exit just a little bit tight in the middle. But as we mentioned, he did not race that all-star race, so he does not have nighttime laps, especially. 
especially with this new spoiler. Well, all three of the Childress cars are in the top 10. Kevin Harvick, the point standing leader in the Sprint Cup Series, right now is the ninth place car. He is eight seconds off the lead after starting 23rd. Harvick's happy about running ninth. He's in mourning over Chris Myers going away. Yeah, right. During last weekend's All-Star festivities here in Charlotte, Toyota unveiled the winning of 77,000 entries in their Sponsifier contest. Praying for Carson was created by Fane App of Danbury, Texas, inspired by her grandson, Carson. Yeah, they came over to my shop uh, last week. What a sweet family. They're from Texas. Carson, he has a rare lung disease. He's only one year old, and they really don't know exactly how to treat it because he's one of the few people that have little guys that's ever had it so uh, she made that car for him and what an awesome job she did and what a great honor to Carson. Now Toyota donated five thousand dollars to Carson's family for medical expenses and Michael Waltrip will try and qualify the praying for Carson graphic scheme this June out at Sonoma on the road course. You saw the Toyota top performers and earlier you saw Jimmy Johnson and Kyle Busch at the front of the pack. But after those after uh, Johnson spin and Kyle's dust up on pit road uh, they are back at 24th and 25th position and McMurray must have gotten a word to chips in the house because he just <laughs> got to get going got to get going fifth place for Jamie Mack and you know back to Kyle Busch we know what the problem is with his race car and Dave Rogers and that 18 crew they need some caution laps to rectify the problem you have a front end setting where you have the distance between the front of the front tires a little more than the distance between the rear of the front tires. It's called toe out. It gives the car stability getting in the corner. It's knocked way out. They need some cautions to be able to adjust that on pit road. We just passed halfway in stock car racing's longest night. Kirk Busch's Dodge leading Clint Boyer's Chevrolet, David Rudiman's Toyota, and Greg Biffle's Ford, the front four.